And so I want to talk a little bit about a survey that came out of the candidates for Ottawa Carlton District School Board, Oceadia SB School Trustee this week. The survey was uh, distributed by uh, FAIR, which stands for Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism. Now, they're an American organization that's come up into Canada. I understand that their chapter here in Ottawa is growing uh, quite quickly. And they've taken a different approach to um, uh, race and racism than is currently being espoused by a particular, uh, uh, let's say, an ideological left uh, uh, identitarian group uh, to, uh, I think the words they use are pro-human. Uh, they're pro-human movement. And they set about asking <clears throat> a number of questions to, to uh, trustee candidates. Okay, so uh, there are some, there's some very interesting outputs here. And there are, have been four candidates who've answered this questionnaire of six who are running in zone six, which is where I'm running. That's Rio Vanya Rockcliffe, uh, including Sandy Hill and the Byward Market. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to read those to you. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the problems that get created or, or come out of this, uh, uh, the, the approach that my opponents advocate for. Okay. So, um, boards should create school and program admission policies that prioritize students based on race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, and other immutable characteristics. So boards school board should create admission policy policies to prioritize students based on race and and gender to prioritize so prioritizing some means deprioritizing others and what are those admissions programs well in particular those admission programs are going to be to art schools to uh, gifted programs to um, to, to sports uh, uh, programs these sorts of things we we know this from the Toronto system that's implemented these things and the problem is that um, people who are, are have socioeconomic challenges, okay? And, and Vanier is a big part of the zone that I'm running in. And, and Vanier is uh, kind of understood and known in Ottawa as a lower income neighborhood with a high number of uh, single parent uh, families. And um, I lived in Vanier myself through a financial uh, transition period in my life. Uh, it was less expensive, um, and uh, it's it's very it's a it's a lovely community, and there are a lot of really passionate um, you know people who feel very strongly about their neighborhood and community in Vanier, and and it's uh, it's really wonderful to see. the The problem with treating these admissions, so you know, like families who don't have a lot of money, and I raised kids, a, a blended family of four, two biological kids and two step kids. And um, when you're trying to provide for four children and create a life for them, uh, and uh, well, it's expensive. And it, it uh, we made a lot of sacrifices uh, raising kids uh, because of our, because of the nature of cost. And depending on the type of work that people do, um, you know, it's it's certainly more more challenging for some than others. We couldn't afford to to put our kids in hockey. We couldn't afford afford to put our kids in uh, you know competitive programs, skiing, gymnastics, um, music, that sort of, sort of thing. Um, my my son, for example, taught himself to play guitar and and taught himself music through YouTube, but we didn't have the ability financially to be able to do that. And, and that's like an awful lot of families, more than not. And it's certainly the case for many families in Vanier. And when there are admission changes to special programs, or, you know, for students who, who don't have as much, I mean, the idea behind this, prioritizing students based on race, ethnicity, gender, identity, sexual orientation, and other immutable characteristics, prioritizing those groups, is that there's no, there's no leveling factor for uh, uh, economy. We've always approached these problems uh, to attempt to provide families in, in some ways who are at, uh, who don't have the economic advantages of, of, of middle and upper class uh, based on their economic status, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, or identity. And 
in a community like Vanier, what happens is if we prioritize some based on race, um, we're not we're not leveling for economy, for for income status, and and we are we're we're trying to level based on race and racial outcomes. So what that does is across we can. I'm going to make a generalization that across Vanier, people are less fortunate than than um, than those who live on the north side of of St. Patrick, um, and uh, and Beechwood, uh, in in Rockcliffe, okay. Uh, but when we only prioritize out of the the social economic cohorts based on race, we are leaving people behind who are already disadvantaged, just as disadvantaged economically uh, as as these other identity groups. But we're we're making our, our decisions, we're discriminating based on race as to, as to who gets in supports towards some of these special programs. Then what happens is, uh, unfortunately, if we simply prioritize people based on, on race, class, gender, and, and their immutable characteristics, their identities, is that we're, in Toronto, what they're doing is a lottery system. So we have an expressed intent to get into a special program. You get entered into a lottery. Then we're not looking at talent. We're not looking at resumes. We're not looking at report cards. We're not looking at rewards. We're not looking at, at portfolios for art, for example. We're looking at at um, making up for historic injustices by uh, through race quotas. And through the lottery system, we're not getting the most talented people. So I have a friend in Toronto who's a teacher who uh, observes that some of these schools, for example, a music school or an art school or you know a theater program, are attracting some of the world's best talent in terms of teachers because the teachers want to go to those schools to uh, mentor and grow and help to develop talent that uh, uh, that already exists. And if a, if expressed intent in the lottery is the only criteria for getting into these programs and racial racial quotas, we're eliminating the the talented uh, by chance. And we're putting people into those programs that aren't the best in the world or that the best in their classes. They're not the most talented. And then the teachers that are going there to mentor and, and develop and grow uh, talent um, are, are begin to feel like they're wasting their time. And this is a really sad uh, a reality. But when we start putting people into programs or in jobs, so for example, let's imagine in your workplace, should your employer, imagine if this was correct, okay, and, and, and happening in your workplace, I'm just going to change the words. Should your employer uh, implement promotion policies and prioritize people in the workplace for promotion based on race, ethnicity, gender identity, and sexual orientation, as well as other immutable, immutable characteristics? Now, maybe the government can get away with that because, uh, like, let's face it, there's an awful lot of waste in government and, and there's a real big difference between private sector and public sector. And I'm being a bit cynical about the government here. But maybe a, 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 bureauc a bureaucratic institution can get away with that game for a little while. But pretty soon, people start to recognize and say, hey, wait a second, if you're prioritizing people based on their race, their gender, their sexual orientation, and their identity, immutable characteristics, you're discriminating against other people who've been there longer, who have more talent, who have, um, that, uh, who work harder, who have, right? We're not putting the best people in the job based on their merit, their hard work, their effort, their energy, and, and their capacities. And that should be level playing field. Right. Regardless, and that's that's why we have laws in Canada. So, look, I'm going to read from you, uh, uh, read for you from the Canadian Human Rights Act. That's the federal legislation around human rights that describes um, prohibited grounds for discrimination. And then I, I want to ask you to consider whether or not uh, prioritizing students based on immutable characteristics for admissions to programs uh, falls within this. These guidelines and these laws uh, that describe uh, our human rights in Canada, or if they're, they're coloring outside the lines here in the name of equity. 
Okay, so prescribed discrimination, general, prohibited grounds of discrimination. Uh, we've got three, I guess it's paragraph one. For the purposes of this act, the prohibited grounds of discrimination are race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender, identity, or expression, marital status, family status, genetic characteristics, disability and conviction for an offense for which a pardon has been granted or in respect of which a record suspension has been ordered. So under the Canadian Human Rights Act, those are the prohibited grounds for discrimination. And when we go to, and I'll just share with you what the answers were to this question. Again, I've read it several times. Boards should create school and program admission policies that prioritize students based on race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, and other mutable, immutable characteristics, unchangeable uh, features of, of, our, uh, of our external presentation. Two of my candidates strongly agree to this, like my competitors, strongly agree that we should have policies that prioritize people based on, on certain race and, and, and uh, immutable characteristics. And, and a third agrees. Not strongly agrees, but agrees. My position on this is I strongly disagree. I believe it's a wrong-headed approach to a problem. And the problem is that, that there are people without the same resources as everybody else. And if they're talented and if they have abilities, we should be able to provide resources for them to help the, and nurture that talent and help them grow to qualify for some of these um, uh, uh, special programs. Also, my I'll finish off with this. Race, ethnicity, gender, identity, sexual orientation, and other immutable characteristics should be considered in deciding who to prioritize for hiring and promoting within teachers, administration, and staff. So we're going to make racial characteristics and, and identity characteristics priorities when hiring. My, uh, uh, the people running against me, two of them strongly agree. And one of them, to his credit, is neutral. This is the survey uh, that was put out to all uh, school board trustees by Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism Ottawa FAIR. You can find the results online. I posted it on my Facebook page. And uh, you can have a look. Uh, I'll also post the link to the Canadian Human Rights uh, um, Code, uh, the Canadian Human Rights Act, so that you can read it for yourself. There's no exceptions in the Act. There isn't, um, we're not going to discriminate against people based on any race, uh, immutable characteristics, uh, identity, uh, color of skin, genetics, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, except for uh, oppressor class which is what what these far left ideologues are 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 have set themselves up uh, to fight against oppression and they they use this idea of oppression and paint it upon uh anyone with white skin and call it white supremacy this is not the way to teach children and to raise uh, uh children in a low conflict environment my name is Shannon Boucher. I'm running for OCDSB zone 6 school trustee vote for me October 24th